Can you guys hear me? Hello, everyone. This is Sheree live on the Ascension Sessions. Uh, it's seven o'clock on February 19th, and I'm just checking the technical specs and making sure everyone can hear me. So I see we've got uh, Dexter in the chat room, John, Kevin, can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. Seems like we are live. There's a little bit of a delay. Hello, Dexter, give me a shout out if you can hear me. Awesome, Kevin says yes. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for confirming that. So I am beyond excited for tonight's guest, you guys. Um, this is someone I've wanted to have on this show for quite a while and um, finally had the bandwidth to get her on this show. And we're coming right up on the San Francisco UFO Con tomorrow. It starts tomorrow in San Francisco. And so we're gonna both be there, but I wanted to bring Geraldine Orozco on the show before the actual conference started so that more people could get to know her and learn about her work. So I'm gonna you know, tell you a little bit more about her right now, and then I'll bring her on the show. So um, Geraldine Orozco provides insight as to how DNA is the currency of the past, present, and future, and how consciousness plays an important role. A life-changing contact experience in 2013 resulted in the activation of psychic abilities. In 2017, she underwent several hypnotic regressions with vetted therapists. Regressions uncovered a lifelong history of abduction and participation in human hybridization with 24 hybrid children as the result. Wow. She is now dedicated to the dissemination of knowledge of hybridization programs and the correction of the commonly held dogma of the human genetic timeline historical record and human structure. Geraldine is the owner of Bay Area Meditation in San Francisco, California, which specializes in corporate wellness programs for Silicon Valley, tech giants including Google, Facebook, Instagram, Square, Procepts, Biorobotics, and more. She facilitates DNA reprogramming internationally, which implements her ability to see the multi-dimensional body, tapping into the soul's blueprint, assisting realignment, healing, and removal of attachments, blocks, blockages, and entities. Utilizing frequency reprogramming the holographic DNA, creating a clear way for the soul's journey through becoming conscious. Geraldine is a speaker, radio host, and is currently writing her book, DNA Origins and the Hybridization Program. So, wow, what an amazing bio you have. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring on Geraldine. Geraldine, are you with us? Say hello. I'm here, hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so nice to see you here on, on Zoom land. And I, okay. I had the... Um, the pleasure of a surprise meeting you down at Conscious Life Expo in LA last weekend, which was pretty cool, cool serendipitous meeting we had. That was so great, Sherry. And thank you so much for having me on your show. It's an honor to be here and happy. And thank you for hosting this kind of platform. And it's amazing to know that you're so close to me. I mean, you're just like 15 minutes away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> really thank you. Yes. And thank you for coming on the show and being so open and receptive. And uh, yeah, when I learned that you were in the Bay Area, I got really excited, you know, cause it's always fun to find, you know, like-minded people and, and other people doing this work. And 
it's nice to have a global tribe, but it's really nice to have a local tribe as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So it's so awesome. So, yeah, so this is a pretty exciting times. Um, I'm going to be seeing you up at um, UFO Con this weekend. And, um, you know, I'm sure you, you're going to have some great workshops there and amazing things to share with the audience. Um, and so my intention of bringing you on tonight was to give my audience members a little bit more information about who you are. And if any of you are local and can come out to San Francisco, you know, you'll get to see Geraldine speak in person. Um, and happy birthday, by the way, yesterday was your birthday. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's so great. Thanks so much to have to do this the next day after my birthday. So yeah, did you have a nice birthday? I did. I had fun. I had a nice dinner with some family and friends. And it's just a good time for me to catch up with people that I often don't have time to do around the year because it gets busy. Yeah, so yeah. Busy. Awesome. That's amazing. So, um, so, you know, just to start off, I wanted to ask you where you are from. Are you originally from the Bay Area? Yeah, born and raised in the Bay Area, um, just right here in Fremont, Fremont Union City. And um, I've traveled and lived in different parts of the world. Uh, in, my early, in my early days, I was an international flight attendant, so I had a chance to travel a little bit. Mm -hmm. And during high school, I also was spending time in South America for a couple of years in Bolivia, which is where I'm from. I'm Bolivian Italian. That's my background. So oh, wow. it's exciting to um, go out there and get connected with my roots and also learn the language. I learned to speak Spanish when I was down there, mm -hmm. but I always keep coming back to the Bay Area. So there must be a reason. <laughs> right. Well, it's great to live here because it's also a pretty diverse area. Yes. You know, great. It's yeah. So perfect for the kind of work that we're doing because people are very open to it. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have that receptivity here. Right. Right. And my mom is actually from Central America. So oh, it's pretty cool that you're awesome. from South America. <laughs> nice. That's so yeah. Cool. Where, where are you from? Where exactly are you from? Um, I was born in Miami, actually. And uh, my mom's Nicaraguan. Okay. And my dad's French and German. So I've got like quite a mix going on. Beautiful. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so I, you know, I watched your um, regression video last night. Uh, I think it was 178, which was really a powerful experience. And it really um, left me feeling very excited for the information that I learned on there. And I just have to say, you know, kudos to you for being public with that information and being so vulnerable and putting that out on YouTube for the public to see, because it was quite an intimate experience. And um, the fact that you can share it so fearlessly is very inspirational, I'm sure, for many people. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you so much, Sheree. I... Honestly, when when I have been going, and I'll tell you about a little about my story, we'll talk a little bit more about it, how it came to that point. But really, I mean, the thing is, like, we're, if I'm not the only person experiencing this, we really need to talk about it, whatever it is, right. uh, we need to share the experiences. So for me, it was a really easy decision to be like, yes, let's put it out there. Let's see who else is having those experiences, who can relate to it mm -hmm. and and um, how it compares. Let's do some research. Let's learn, learn about each other and what we're experiencing here on this earth planet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so important, the work you're doing. So that's awesome. Um, and so I want to ask you, like, when did you know you were different, you know, and like, and as a child, and maybe like, when did your awakening start? You know, when did you st kind of start linking everything together? Yeah, for me, it was, it's been a long time coming. Uh, really, you know, I've been blessed with a really spiritual family. Like my family is very, uh, you know, we've kind of grown together in a way spiritually. I started meditating at a very early age, 16, 15 years old. My father taught me how to meditate. And um, since childhood, I would go through different kinds of religions. You know, I was raised Catholic in a sense, and then I was into Gnosticism, and I even went to a Lutheran private school. Um, so my roots began in that 
a Christian Catholic background and then kind of evolved into different. I went into Buddhism, Zen, uh, Hinduism, even the Krishnas, um, <laughs> you know, Sufism, and even looked into the Muslim religion. So many, many different religions trying to understand and learn and really diving into that culture because I loved cultures. I had a fascination with art and culture. And at an early age, I was really um, given the opportunity to explore those things with my parents, mm -hmm. um, having that openness and love of art um, and everything and, and history and all the, uh, you know, the, the study, the study of our world, of our society. And so I think that allowed me to have a really broad, open mind and allow me to feel like it was okay to search and go deeper. Um, but, you know, I went into a point in 2008 and 2009, I was working for a telecom company and it's where I met my partner. And it was during that time that I began my shamanic training. Um, and I started the shamanic training really just to learn about the body, about meditation, uh, an extra step to my understanding of what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened is that my partner passed away. And when uh -oh. he passed away, that's really when things kind of hit for me. Because my question was, okay, I feel like I'm doing everything right. I'm meditating. I'm reading the books. I go to the lectures. You know, I'm paying the money to go to these things, but mm -hmm. I'm not turning into Buddha. Like things are not working. So what am I missing? Mm -hmm. What's not, what, what am I not understanding about this spiritual journey? And after a while, you go to so many lectures that everything starts to sound the same and you feel right. like you're not really getting much from it. But when that happened, I said, you know, there's there's something here that I need to understand deeper. And so I dove even deeper and that really allowed me to find myself. And I went really deep into meditation and started to deconstruct all of the programs that I had, um, you know, uh, been been a product of since childhood, um, not just through religion, but culturally. Um, you know, emotionally, the role as a woman, the role as uh, my my culture, my even my ethnic background would play in who I needed to be or needed to look like or needed to present myself as. So I began to deconstruct all of those things. And I realized that who I was, the person I had become was nothing really what I really truly believed I should be. And mm. so that kind of started a journey uh, during that time from 2009. Um, I became, I, I already had uh, funded Bay Area meditation. I was teaching corporate meditation, right. uh, but this was like much deeper work. And I became certified in pranic healing and quantum energy healing, mainly just to learn. Uh, well, when he passed away, it, w it inspired me. I thought, you know, if I knew how to heal, if I knew a little bit more about the body, maybe I could have supported him that way. Mm. Of course, we know that's not really how things happen. But at the time, that was my fascination with the healing arts. But I never thought that I would be doing it full time the way I'm doing it now. Um, and so we, we're going to jump fast forward to 2013. And so this is where um, I had been working on deconstructing those aspects to my, of myself. And I had an abduction experience one night um, out of my bedroom. And, you know, that, that really just completely changed everything. Yeah, go ahead, Sherry. Ah. Oh, I can't hear you, Sherry, so I'll just let you do. We might be frozen. Hey, Sherry, I think you're muted. Or maybe you're not, I don't know. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear Hi. you now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. Zoom just quit out and um, now we're back. So we'll keep going. Um, 
Geraldine, did you say that um, you lost your partner in 2009? Was that the same yes, year? Yes, yes. That was the same year you started um, studying energy work and then you also started uh, teaching meditation in corporate scenario, but you were already working in corporate America at that time. Yeah, I was heavily yeah. working in corporate America. That's right. So I was in the telecom okay. industry and I had made a, a jump because I, I traveled to China and I saw the import export and I started an event planning company alongside my meditation practice. Um, so in any case, that's, that's how it started for me. But I think what really shifted was when I had that abduction experience in 2013. That's when things started to get really, uh, you know, it was a different way of being. And I think that's when I first realized that everything, my entire understanding, the paradigm of reality went into question. Right. And then in 2017, when I had the re regressions, you know, I had these massive amounts of information mm -hmm. coming in and I couldn't go back to living my old life, you know, right. after that. So, yeah, go ahead. So with the 2013 abduction experience, was that the first one that you remembered? Because obviously you'd been having them since you were a child. Uh, we're not obviously, but I know that and you know that. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, was that the first one where you aware during the whole time or was it more like a discovery after the fact the next day kind of thing no 2013 was a vivid wide awake experience oh wow okay so so that's why it was so impactful for me and not just that mm -hmm. but um as a result of that experience the next monday when i went to see my first meditation client it was like i could see absolutely colors lights uh you know, little different variations of the body and energetically, everything, everything, it had zipped open these psychic abilities. Yeah. And from so that, you, you could see their toroidal field, everything. Yes. Yeah. The, Amazing. The, the electromagnetic field. I mean, I could see what I could see is their energy body, basically right. the layers of the energetic body and all the information that was in it. And, you know, at the first, at first when that, because it was such a drastic change, I mean, I, I was nauseous and I, I it took me a long time for a whole, almost two months. I couldn't leave my house. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't go grocery shopping because it was too much. It felt like almost as if you are coming out of, um, I don't know, you're, you're waking up from some surgery or something and you're, you know, taking a look at these lights and everything. So yeah, it was pretty impactful experience. Yeah, it sounds amazing. And um, I mean, because you didn't have any time to prepare, right? It was like, you just went from zero to a hundred. Exactly. You know, like, okay, everything switched on, turned on. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's a lot to deal with. So I'm not surprised that you couldn't leave your house. Um, is that, but so you had already started the meditation practice, but I imagine that did your meditation practice deepen at that point? Like, did you find yourself sitting longer and, and, and getting more answers that way now that you had these new abilities? Yes. Well, you know, I had already been spending a lot of time. I mean, my meditation practice normally was about four hours a day, sometimes two in the morning, two at night or four hours straight. Um, because again, you know, I had been for a couple of years before that deconstructing myself, really going deep into the core of who I was and coming into a point of like neutrality, that zero point of us where we completely we lose the identity that we so had into this nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that perhaps my vibration was so high during that point that maybe that's what triggered this kind of experience. And what I'm seeing in my research also as working with other contactees is that this is, this is also a very typical thing. Sometimes some, in some cases they uh, come into these high states of vibration and they, they, that's when they're able to go and have these interdimensional contacts. But my experience is very vivid. I mean, it was physical. I was, you know, paralyzed, awake, taken out of my bed, room and into craft and introduced to these children um which was you know incredible i mean i i saw these children as my own and uh, oh wow so your first vivid experience in 2013 was the one where you met your hybrid children exactly exactly wow. i was introduced to them so when i see okay. this and i'm seeing these beautiful children and i see myself in them and i'm not a mother on this on you know on this planet but that maternal connection and this telepathic connection to these children that it's you see a part of yourself in them even though they don't look 100 human they look 
different um the, the connection with them and and they it feels like they could see right through you they know everything about you so you know you just can't you can't erase such a powerfully emotional experience i mean it just completely makes you question everything about your life and where do they come from <laughs> you know yeah mm-hmm. right wow and so I imagine that when you were doing all of these long meditations, you were um, communicating with your guides already and getting answers and guidance to navigate through your day. And um, did you like, did you find that your guides are ETs or, you know, do you call them like angels, spirit guides? Like, do you, have you identified them and are they more like your starseed family or do you care to share who they are? Sure. Um, you know, during the time of that heavy deconstruction, for me, my job was to really find my core. So I didn't, the word alien and extraterrestrial was not even in my language, actually, ever in my life until that experience. Uh, so when I saw them, it was kind of a rude awakening. I mean, I hadn't read any books about them or even seen speakers discuss that topic at all. My focus is mainly in spiritual aspect. But um, my guides guides per se for me my introduction to that kind of came after my regressions in 2017 where i began in my regressions to reconnect with uh supposed counsel that i had been a part of and interacted with mm-hmm. um and you know, on these beings however you know i for me, what's really important, Cherie, is to understand how our mind works and how in these multidimensional bodies we're manifesting and projecting our reality. And what I have learned is that, you know, we really have fragments of ourselves that we're really interacting with. So um, in my personal experience, even the guides that can manifest in some form for myself are really fragments of my own self Mm -hmm. that I've kind of reconnected with. So I don't tend to identify them as names or angels or anything like that. Um, And as a matter of fact, I'm very careful when I connect to something, if anything, um, and defining you know what that vibrational frequency is because we are the ones that are kind of projecting into our reality our experience and all of that is based on our belief systems and everything that we have within us Mm -hmm. so it's interesting when you come to this point of the zero point your interaction with your mind and the fragments of yourself are slightly different they're sometimes you're not really connecting with guides in that way in that same way that we we might think right right So, and that was something that, you know, I learned in your regression uh, video last night was, you know, a lot about your understanding of the holographic universe and how much of what we're experiencing is just our perception. Um, And that there are many, many, many multiverses and there's many Geraldines in all of those dimensions and timelines and, 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 you know, multiverses. Um, So in that sense, it makes sense that your higher self is basically your guide. Yes. You know, but then I have to ask like, well, does each iteration of yourself have its own guide or is there one higher self for all of those iterations of yourself? (laughs) And that's an amazing question. I mean, the way that I explain this is kind of like a web, like a spider's web. Mm -hmm. And we are at the center. Whatever is consciously aware at that moment is what is at the center of that web just like the universe and the universe, they say that it looks like it's expanding from any direction that you look at it from. Mm -hmm. So in that same way, that's kind of how our conscious awareness of our multi uh, multi multidimensionality is is functioning. And whoever is aware in that moment has the ability to access fragments of yourself. So for example, I think what happened in my experience was that after deconstructing this human aspect of myself now and what we're talking about is we're going into our dna when we are deconstructing and in meditation and working with with ourselves with our thought forms thought forms are a product of everything that is kind of programmed into our dna and it is a holographic structure of information that is storing everything that we're experiencing from the moment we wake, wake up to the moment that we go to sleep it's holographically recording it through 
the, uh, you know, the skin, through the nervous system, going into the endocrine system, into the chakra system, which kind of organizes in this, you know, amazing chakra system. And everything that is stored within that body mm -hmm. is kind of holographically stored within the computing processing system. So what happens is we pick up those files. And when you clean that up, you then have access to other fragments of yourself that you can pool. And I think what happens is when someone is working on deconstructing the physical this illusion aspect of yourself you kind of start coming into the higher planes of yourself you come into the the aspects of that of literally your uh that's what they call you know you're activating your dna it mm -hmm. means that you are coming into the higher strands of your body and mm -hmm. when you do you can access alien aspects of yourself extraterrestrial interdimensional aspects of yourself and you can bring them into be um something that is, is very interesting that I have been able to apply uh, is any time that I become sick or any time that I am nervous or afraid, you pull from aspects of yourself that are not in that and you bring them and you embody them into your body and you can literally shift completely your experience. You can even activate new abilities, talents within you that you don't have. That's how powerful we are as these multidimensional beings. Mm -hmm. So um, in reality, when we look at these regressions, for example, that we're accessing um, aspects of ourselves from what we think is the past but in reality it's us at the center of that web mm -hmm. going to these other fragments of ourselves because of course time is not linear it's more like this I don't know uh, the shape I can give you it's like a spherical mass that we're we're in the center of that we're accessing information and right. we're pulling from those fragments the information and bringing it into the now mm -hmm. but in reality all of those things are happening simultaneously right now. Right. Yeah. So if we're pulling from those experiences, we're embodying that aspect. That's why we can create healing from regression because we're accessing those timelines with information that literally are changing and shifting even our own DNA mm -hmm. and creating new ways of, of new neural pathways. That's why, uh, you know, hypnotherapy works. Right. Cause they say you're, you're healing your past, present and future potentially all at once. Exactly. And it's very true how that functions. So, so when you, when you ask the question, like, is it one higher self? What we're looking at here is we're looking at the holographic structure of the soul. The, this uh, soul is that infinite consciousness that is holding on to all of these fragments of ourselves. And so in a lifetime, depending on how we are working from the moment we are born to the moment we die with that information, how we're progressing, evolving, cleaning, changing all that information, mm -hmm. it will define the vibrational frequency that this organism has before it passes on, before it leaves this physical shell. And all that it's doing is it's pulling out of that DNA, the physical body, which is recorded into the soul, and that soul then moves on through, you know, this other structure that we can discuss in a moment, and comes into another physical body or moves on to whatever it wishes to access. But all mm -hmm. of those fragments will be moving on with it. It's just like a holographic projection that comes from this uh, soul, this consciousness. It's like you're saying we're all floppy drives. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so, you know, you talked about like um, how Mother Earth, Gaia is like basically a big white cell, right? Yeah, yeah. And that we as individual parts of that source, that infinite uh, creator or that cell, you know, our, our main mission in this life is to heal ourselves and heal the earth, right? So that we can all go back to source, which is ultimately what the ascension is. And so, you know, I, I really digested that concept. And then, you know, based on the, the holographic universe and the fact that, you know, or the concept that we have multi multi-dimensionality and our DNA is like this recording device, you know, there's also like, part of me wants to go, but we're really just AI, you know? So my question to you would be like, well, are we AI or are we these like amoebas? <laughs> in this bigger petri dish called the universe or the galaxy or you know the multiverse because 
they feel different to me. One feels more organic, even though we're all connected. And the other one feels more like artificial intelligence. Yeah. So yeah. What, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing question. And thank you so much for getting to that question, because it really is important for us to get to the point where we're having these kinds of questions because they, ha- they help us understand, you know, what's real, what's not real, how we're operating these little systems, these little organic organic meat suits that we have. I mean, Mm -hmm. um, the way uh, the the human body is like the most advanced biotechnology is what I, what, what I say, because the, the human body has the ability, first of all, of accessing this infinite consciousness, which is that soul, which, which is what makes this human body function the way that it does. Um, and however, um, it's kind of like the running software program that is running the show. But something happens when this soul comes into what we know as this matrix multiverse. And, I, and the word matrix, sometimes it like makes people cringe a little bit, you know, and I, I understand. But I think it's an interesting word to use because what it is, is it's a false structure of reality. In other words, it's a designed structure of reality is what I mean. And what I mean by that is that if we look at the world around us and how everything is built, um, I mean, our structure of society, of religion, of culture, even sex, everything is built on this uh, basic law of the universe, which is this dualistic uh, energies that are creating, that are creating life. There are certain laws of the universe of creation that we abide by. And so if we know that, we can understand how things are coming are manifesting into life so when this human body comes into this three-dimensional plane which is where this creative life force is being manifested Mm -hmm. we have to play by those rules but this infinite consciousness cannot just project its all infinity into this physical body it is fragmented down and projected from that into what creates this uh, body, this human body. Now we talk about the holographic universe from the concept that we're all little oscillating molecules that are creating these toroidal fields which create a network um, that is then combining and it's intercommunicating with each other to create this massive body that's a structure but just the way the body is created from this holographic design so is our planet earth all the living organisms in it Mm -hmm. so is the universe and the multiverse and other universes as well function in 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 a similar format Um, and it but depending on the dimension that we're going into because then we also have another structures of dimensions that we're going into the laws of physics can change they can be different right but in the three-dimensional plane this information has to compartmentalize in some way so in the human body it's structured into the chakra system and the soul is what will feed into it that life force that keeps this human body moving now what makes us different from uh, let's say artificial intelligence in a sense is the fact that we have as infinite consciousness the ability to apply what we call free will okay but free will is only available to the organism that is aware that it has it Mm. so so then what's happening what's happening to these organ i I call i call humans organisms we 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 are all these very complex organisms um and the reason why is because if we're not consciously aware that we are these conscious beings we fall into what we're living here the structure of reality which is created by these laws of the universe to create what we live in okay we have our you know, our family structure, our society, we have the, 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 line, the lines of how life need to be lived. And we live them out, we follow the rules, we go by those guidelines, but a lot of times it's not working, right? It's not, it's not working. We look around us and we see a lot of suffering. And what, what we see is that inherently, we realize that uh, intuitively, we're not, we're not 100% in alignment or we're not congruent with the way that this system is set up here for right. life, 
for what we call life. Right. The the two don't go together. They don't go together. So in my the- mind, like if if our goal is simply to heal and heal the planet so we can go back to source, why are we living in this false matrix? Why do we have houses? Why do we have, you know, the list goes on and on and on, right? Yeah. Cars, yeah. And- cars, jobs, yeah. uh, families, <laughs> clothes, you know, all of it. Like it just feels like a totally different dimension and totally different agenda and a totally different reality. Right. So, so then, um, yeah. because when you think of an amoeba inside your body or a cell inside of our body, which is just a smaller micro version of us, like they don't live in houses. They don't, you know, have jobs. Well, they have jobs, but not the way we <laughs> have jobs. <laughs> Yes. So that was, you know, another thing that came to mind after hearing your regression is like, wow, this is so complex because we do have free will. Um, and we're, we're taught from the beginning that we're all individuals and we're so unique and, and be yourself and, you know, be unique. And um, in a way that's also contradictory to we are all one. So, I mean, I just have like so many questions. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's perfect, yes. And, and, and so that's the point. The point is yeah. that we're not really organically, we know that there is something that is really suppressing and compartmentalizing mm-hmm. our abilities, even as humans in this very, in this, uh, in this human body. And so the question is, why is that? You know, why is it that, you know, just like in my own personal experience, I kept hitting these roadblocks over and over again, even though I thought that I was following and going by the rules. So what was happening? And I hear this time and time again, I mean, with every client I work with, they reach a point where it's like, you know, things are not moving the way they need to be moving. And so the question is, it's like, we're meant to organically go within and try to rediscover who we really are. That doesn't fall anywhere near the guidelines of this society that we're living. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in, in that sense, then that means that there is some kind of system. Uh, and I mean, who decided how this was going to be built up? How are the systems created, designed in order to keep humans in this, in this manner, in this three-dimensional plane? Mm-hmm. So the, you can only design such a complex system if you understand how the human body works, mm-hmm. that's how complex this multidimensional body is. Because we are these incredible storage systems that everything that we're experiencing, we're kind of storing into the multidimensional body. Uh, everything that we think, feel, everything that we feel from others, we're, we're storing in this, we're filing in this filing cabinet that is providing us with information about how we should behave, how we should interact. And most of the time we're at cause and effect. We're, we're constantly reacting to the, the events that are happening around us, mm-hmm. but that will shift when there is a shift of awareness within this human organism begins to question what we're experiencing. And so that's what make that's the difference between being this artificial intelligence. I mean, the human body in these little meat suits could be an artificial intelligence in a sense. And the reason why I say that is because when the soul is incarnating into the physical body, it chooses the family that it's going to be coming into based on its vibrational frequency, okay? So when the soul comes in, it attaches to two aspects, right? It attaches to this physical body and the physical body is holding in to the DNA. The DNA has is connected to your ancestral lineage. Your ancestral lineage will take you down an entire family lineage that goes all the way back to the very beginning of life on this planet. Mm-hmm. But all of these programs that are cycling through your ancestral lineage are the ones that are creating your programs that you're running. So how did you come into that family? Thanks. Okay. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's very, I mean, and it's very interesting because this is what I work with every day. I, 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 when I'm working with DNA reprogramming, we're looking at these repetitive patterns that people are going through and it's incredible. The question is, okay, why did you incarnate in this family where, you know, we have a alcoholic father or a mother that is disconnected, feeling insecure about herself, doesn't know how to love herself. I mean, the lesson is the same over and over again. So there's a certain design for us humans when we come and reincarnate into these physical bodies that we're all here to share. And that design is the is an understanding of how to come into this 
uh, expression of uh, back to that zero point, to that infinite consciousness? How do we go back to that state of awareness in which we are aware of ourselves as, as more than just this physical body and the illusion that we're living in? And mm -hmm. that's really the difficult part. But right. when you get to that point, that's when you begin to see reality. That's when you look beyond this veil and you realize that you can actually uh, deprogram all of these false programs that were being uh, put here that keep us in a state of fear, anxiety, disconnect, all these things that are causing complete disconnects in the mind and the body that break down the body over time, that cause illness, that even cause aging, right? Because our human bodies, because of all the belief systems, we're running through these programs that are deconstructing us more and more uh, through the cycle of life and death. And so we can actually regenerate that. We can reverse that by uh, changing the programs that we have in our mind and accessing uh, aspects of ourselves that are in running on different kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Honestly. How long, how long um, does it take you to do that? So specifically what I'm asking is like, um, you know, you're like the second or third person who's talked about this, what I call quantum jumping, where you can access a different version of yourself in another dimension and pull in information or skills or talents from that other self. Um, how, how long does that take? And how do you know once you've pulled in what you were searching for? You know um, what I mean? And have you done it yourself? Yes, yes, I do. Can you give us an example of that? Sure, I will give you an example. It's all about vibrational frequency. We're talking about energy. As you know, everything is energy. Everything is energy mm -hmm. because everything is oscillating at a certain level, mm -hmm. uh, a certain vibrational frequency, okay? Mm -hmm. And that vibrational frequency will define the output of this kind of computing system. In other words, if you can imagine your human body as a computing system, whatever algorithm you're running and software you're running in the back end is what's gonna put the output. So, um, let's give you a very simple uh, example. One of the most incredible things that I have learned over the past couple of years was how to heal myself. Mm -hmm. And um, any time that I begin to feel sick, let's just talk about the common flu, the common flu, the common cold. Mm -hmm. When somebody starts to get certain symptoms in the body, you identify where in the body the illness is or that, that out of balance is. And where it is, let's say the chest here, the, the, the respiratory system becomes attacked. Almost every time that I have a client that has symptoms like that, mm -hmm. they had been going through some kind of stress where they experienced deep feelings of helplessness, feelings of uh, trauma, uh, fear, uh, a lack of self-love completely, a, a, a lack of deep love, you know, feeling loved or the ability to be loved. There's several, several certain specific things that people feel. And mm -hmm. then they come into this state of, of um, illness, you know, whether it's a flu or a cold. And I've realized that even for my own self, I mean, I watch, I make it a habit to watch my emotions every moment of the day. And it allows me to become aware of when I start to feel triggered when something happens. So if I start to become the observer, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I start to feel like I'm overwhelmed or feeling sick in that way, immediately my body, the immune system starts to attack itself because that's how it is. And so you're talking about amoeba. So here's another going back to that representation of how we're not like amoebas. When consciousness rejects itself, it becomes parasitic. So, mm -hmm. you know, it needs to feed off something else outside of it. And so that was the reason why I was talking about the incarnation, because we are incarnating in something like a parasitic consciousness. This entire matrix that we live in, it is parasitic. It, the design is parasitic because it's, in a sense, not allowing these souls, these human organisms to evolve rapidly. It's slowing it down. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that that's just the design of this current three-dimensional plane in which everything is very physical. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. 
And so when someone becomes uh, rejecting that consciousness, they become parasitic. And, and, and that's the same way that illness functions in the body. If we don't love ourselves, if we reject ourselves, if we feel pain or insignificant or unworthy, we begin to embody this kind of parasitic consciousness. And thus, our cells listen to that and follow suit. So they become parasitic. And depending on the vibrational frequency of that thought form, you're also creating that in the body. And so that's what's going to happen. Those cells that belong here within the heart chakra center area of the, of the uh, identity of the self begin to attack itself. And it's like, you know, let's get sick because we don't love ourselves. And it, that's simplifying. It's a very complex thing that we're talking about different systems that are affected by one single thought. You know, you can change the way that your entire organism is doing. So if you change that and come into a state of love, for example, or self-love, complete awareness of yourself, your emotions, acknowledgement of those emotions, instead of ignoring them, you can reverse those symptoms immediately. And I have embodied that myself i have been able to apply um, speed reading techniques um, bring them into my body so i can speed read and study and, and learn things and i've been able to slowly activate certain things of myself just by meditating just by applying um, a very powerful deep belief system everything is in the mind if our mind is believing something but it can't just be a superficial belief we're talking about because what creates our reality is the subconscious yeah. mind right mm -hmm. and so if the subconscious mind on the surface believes it's happy it's good um, but in the inside there's a very deep program of being unworthy it's not going to work that's why the law of attraction, the secret, all these things, you know, sometimes they're not working because it's the real deep belief systems and programs that have to be cleaned up. They have to be edited and um, understood, you know, so that you can really embody that true, um, that true self, that true love, which is a very different thing, uh, Cherie. Actually, we're just learning what those emotions are. And that's kind of what I'm an advocate for is to learn what true, what it is to be a real human. It's a, it's a different thing than what we think. Yeah. Wow. That's really deep. And, um, you know, talking about those emotions and thought forms and just having a shift in consciousness. Um, do you believe that you can change your mind or your consciousness with just the intention of changing your mind. So let's say, for example, I've always believed that I am a slow walker, you know, and then I um, investigate that and I really go within and I really kind of analyze it and take it apart. And then I come to a realization that I'm not really a slow walker, or maybe I don't want to be one anymore. Is it something that, um, you believe can be shifted instantaneously simply by shifting your mind and your beliefs, but really fully and wholly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But you know, it's a process just like our spiritual awakening and the embodiment of our higher self. We mm -hmm. have to support ourselves because once you begin to deconstruct why you even thought that you were a slow walker to begin with, you know, yeah. what is that? Did you, was it something your parents told you? Did you feel unworthy? Did, was it a trauma? What happened? And you clean that up. Then you begin to understand how the processes of your mind are. What are your triggers? And that can take you down, you know, a rabbit hole to really sure. understand even more truths about yourself. Yeah. So sometimes that journey can be very, it's very vulnerable place to be because you have to clean up your entire paradigm of belief. Everything will be changing the way that you see the world the way that you see yourself will have to change and so that that's why uh the spiritual journey is a very difficult one it's a very lonely one mm -hmm. you know and our job um and something that i'm focusing on much more this year is creating programs to support that kind of spiritual work because what do we hear Cherie? we hear people that feel lonely on the process they don't know who to talk to about it who to relate to um and, and they just don't understand it the, yes like what's happening to me you know dark night of the soul or just gifts coming online or whatever exactly yeah so we, 
support that. And it's an ongoing thing. The thing is that, I mean, you're changing everything. It's not just that. That can open a whole rabbit hole of other things about yourself that you need to begin to change. And when you do address them, the awareness of addressing them is the first step to applying a complete shift in the way that you think and feel and act. Yeah. Yeah. So can we talk about who the seekers are for a little while? Who are the seekers? Well, the seekers in my regression, I'm talking about, um, you know, so, so here, here I am coming into this regression. This is the second regression I've ever done. And um, uh, in this part, I'm going deeper. I'm looking uh, beyond the universe to take a look at how the structure of this reality is even creating or the matrix, you know, how, how it even comes to be, how it works. Mm -hmm. And what I find is that the seekers are all of these human beings on this planet that they're incarnating maybe, maybe many, many lifetimes. Okay. Or, uh, and what that means is that they have asked, they have um, accessed many fragments of themselves. Okay, from past, future, a lot of them, a lot of seekers are incarnating, actually coming back from the future, because it means that they have already lived many, many lifetimes. You see, they have this stored wisdom, which are already just recognizing in this lifetime. They come into that awakening pretty early on in their life. Um, You know, they're conscious of the earth, conscious of the body, their mind, you know, people that are already coming into that and their their purpose is to seek truth to understand they already know that the the reality that we live in is false it's wrong mm-hmm. and they're ready for that to embody that next step so the seeker is that person um which is many of us many of these uh, indigo children these new consciousness children that are being born on the planet mm-hmm. are here with a, a, a very deep awareness already of our you know our structure of reality and they're here to do the work they're here to support that they have certain gifts that can help us uh open up and move and advance that and in the regression i'm talking about viruses and um you know white cells and red blood cells and the reason why is because if you look at this entire organism i mentioned it's like a parasitic organism that we live in really if all the human beings on this planet were to become conscious from one day to the next it would work just like that, like a white blood cell that eats out this kind of parasitic consciousness and it would just dissolve Mm -hmm. because that's just how we create this uh, complete shift, this complete change of coming back to that zero point. Uh, When this infinite consciousness is fragmented, it creates, it's kind of like a a white light shining through a prism, you know, it creates rainbow fragments. And so those fragments are what we have here on the body, but it's also how this entire universe is created. When that fragmentation reverses, it goes back through that prism, back into that white light. That's how you come back to source. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, an analogy to explain how consciousness is fragmented, um, you know, in these individual bodies that experience life as they do. Yeah, that's a really good, um, like, visual for me, because I'm very visual, so I appreciate that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So... If I understand what you're saying correctly, you're saying that currently in this false matrix society that we're living in, in this three-dimensional reality, um, our our collective human consciousness is acting more like a parasitic uh, behavior than the opposite. Is that accurate? Is that what you're saying? So the system is parasitic. Okay. And the system that we live in, the system that we live in, okay. however, our unconsciousness is an embodiment of that parasitic consciousness when we don't, or we choose not to wake up or become aware. Right. Right. Okay. Because so- I've also, I've often like, you know, been in an airplane and I look down and I see like all the structures on the earth, Yeah. you know, and it looks like what a parasite would do when it's taking over something yeah right um great way to put it and i that i and it's always disturbed me you know yes (laughs) because i see like what we're doing to the earth and how we're just like terraforming and we're changing it and we're just 
taking over the land. Exactly. Um, Apparently, we know. We know that that's inorganic. Mm -hmm. When you come back to that organic state of being, you're more connected with nature. That's just the natural law of how our conscious soul works. So then we know that there's a conflict with the kind of reality that we live in. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so it's a very deep thing to think of ourselves as that, you know, parasitic uh, energy, if you will. Um, but I understand what you're saying in, in the fact that it's not permanent, you know, mm-hmm. It's, it's like the yin and the yang. There's the dark and the light and, and we're both right now. And you kind of can choose to be um, in alignment with one or the other, you know, depending where your consciousness is. Absolutely. And there's no right and wrong, really. Yeah. It's just cause and effect. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all it is. Yeah. Right. So um, can you share with our audience today, like your definition of ascension mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. when ascension came into your awareness and and um you know what you teach because i think you you call yourself an ascension uh ascension coach coach that's it thank you <laughs> yeah yeah i call myself an ascension coach because it's exactly what i'm doing with people is is walking them through this dna reprogramming where they are deconstructing themselves uh, into reaching that zero point and then identifying who they really are because mm-hmm. we have the ability of embodying any kind of manifestation of life form right we we really do any kind of uh, not not in life form we have a uh, we can manif- we can how embody any kind of manifestation of uh, consciousness or mind that we want to any aspect of ourselves we can embody um, and so my concept of ascension is really coming back to that zero point and sustaining that zero point sustaining the highest vibration possible which mm-hmm. means that you are uh, reaching a level of observation and the embodiment of your of that infinite connection to who you are so um In other words, what that looks like on the physical is the embodiment of that unconditional love, Mm -hmm. because the unconditional love is the acceptance, the acknowledgement, or seeing things outside of you as part of yourself. So if you reach the level where you're able to become integrated in yourself, in in your body, in your mind, and with the world around you, that's when you begin to experience magic in your life. You come into a point where you're in this symbiotic relationship with yourself and this entire matrix that you're in. You're no longer in that cause and effect. You're now entered a state of creation and it's a completely different way of being you are very consciously aware of yourself and what you're doing Mm -hmm. and um, what you're creating now, even if you're at home and you're sitting there and just holding a feeling of love all day. Okay. People may hear that and they might be like, well, what about my paying my bills? You know, I'm a living example that the moment I had my second uh, regression, I sold my business. I quit a very high paying job and I completely I surrendered. I said, you know, I give myself to the universe. Please use me to do what we need to do here. I'm ready to come into my expression. And, you know, it's like the universe supports you. Everything flows. There's not even one question about what you need to be doing, who you need to be doing it with. It just flows. And that's the kind of... uh, um, kind of uh, expression that we want to come into this creative life force that is here to hold space first individually in your body of unconditional love so that you can then literally uh, be like an example to all things around you and that's how we begin to shift things so my exam my idea of ascension is really the ability to be able to sustain that unconditional love Mm -hmm. all the time be that powerhouse you know yeah. And um, how do you coach your clients through through that process? So for example, you know, we may have a day where we start off in 5D and we feel amazing and we meditated and we had a great shower and a great tea and, you know, and then like we get a phone call or we get triggered somehow, <laughs> right? And you can feel yourself like, like, yes. you know, sliding backwards into uh, a different reality or a different vibration uh, even. Yeah. So how do you coach your students or clients through that? 
that, that event because that probably happens to us like several times a day right of course of yeah. course I mean one of the things that I, I talk about is you know not to create illusions anymore I mean what we want to do is get away from illusions mm -hmm. we are just these human organisms experiencing life but if you're in a constant state of cause and effect and you're and you are still you when you haven't um, deprogrammed all of the traumas mm -hmm. in your life, which means that you you haven't gone to those traumas, to those pain bodies, and all of that information, all the trauma. Every time that you experience a trauma, a fragment of a soul of your soul is created, and it's left suspended in that timeline. Mm -hmm. So those are the fragments that we have around us, whether in the past or in the future, anytime. So when when something happens to us, it triggers us. So let's say we get that phone call, and so what does it trigger? What it's triggering is information that is here. It's lingering in your energetic body and your multidimensional body. So that means it's still there. If you take the time to address that and understand what causing that trigger and go back to its root cause and begin to work with that information by creating new ways of looking at it by understanding what is true okay and so what is true mm -hmm. is basically what i was talking about the lo basic laws of the universe mm -hmm. which are the natural laws of creation if we 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 experience pain because we're looking at something from one certain perspective but if we begin to look at thing at the same experience from multiple perspectives, we begin to learn a lot. We learn about ourselves. We learn about the other people involved. We learn about our humanity, our society, everything. So many different mm -hmm. things. Um, and it's necessary for us to do that work because then we understand that we don't need to embody that victim mindset that we can then learn through that experience, through the knowledge and understanding of that experience that we can begin to have compassion uh, of why we ended up having that experience. We're all human and all of us experience trauma. We all have these trying experiences and we're all a product of our pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So if we understand that and we go through our life and deprogram all of those experiences, mm -hmm. you come to a point where you have cleaned up all of that. So now when something happens, you no longer are holding on or suppressing that pain. You're very aware of yourself because you know you're suffering, you know you've your pain. And so basically what I say is that the pain that we don't heal, uh, we become a slave to that pain. Yeah. Because our entire life is is based on nurturing that or hiding it or, you know, making sure it's safe or making sure right. no one sees it, Putting making it sure we don't even see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so we become slaves to our own suffering. Mm -hmm. So when we clean that up, mm -hmm. we don't need to be, uh, you know, enslaved by those programs anymore. We can then come into who we truly are because we are not those things. We yeah. are so expansive expressive uh, expressions of infinite consciousness that's the thing that we need to start understanding and so that empowered creative cr creator role is some is is a force to be reckoned with it's something completely different mm -hmm. you know? and so my job is to support people in going through which is very painful cleaning up all that stuff always remembering to have that state of observation and ultimate truth of what is what is balanced what is natural what is real mm -hmm. what is real is not imbalanced truths it is the whole truth without judgment just observe observation so that has to happen on a root level and that's that's kind of what i do with my clients when i do a dna, DNA reprogramming uh, little by little yeah that's amazing thank you so much for sharing your process with us um, so I can't believe it's already been an hour. <laughs> the first hour just flew by. Um, I'd like to check in to the chat room and, uh, would you be okay taking a question or two from, uh, people in the chat room? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. I have a lot more questions, but I want oh, to yeah. give them a chance. <laughs> so let's see if we have any questions in here. Uh, I think, okay. So Dex, so we have Dex with us. Um, he's coming in all the way from Australia and his question is, do you think some guides are a part of the false matrix? Mm -hmm. That's an awesome question. Thank you so much for asking that because, um, I, I do. And it's the, the way I call the false matrix is that parasitic consciousness, right? We are in, we're living in a dualistic expression of creation. And so when this, 
um, uh, imbalanced or the consciousness that rejects itself begins to manifest itself. It manifests itself on multiple dimensions, okay? So right now, here, me and you and all you listeners are in and out of dimensions all the time, okay? Some of you have heightened psychic abilities. You can hear things, see things, sense things. And so that's us tapping into other dimensions. So- Is that um, true for like daydreaming when you like space out for a minute and then you come back and you're like, wait, what did I just miss? <laughs> is, that, is that the same thing? Well, yeah, in a way, in a way, because when we're okay. actually spaced out, literally we're leaving our body, our body right. is going somewhere else. And that's dangerous sometimes because then the human body is open up to any kind of hosts that want to come in and, and t attach to us. So we have to remember that. And mm -hmm. so this, that's a perfect example because he's talking about what if they come in from the false matrix? And that's a very real thing. And it's something that I'm actually going to talk about this weekend about mind control and this parasitic consciousness because mind control is something that we need to start understanding how it works. Really, anything that imposes belief systems or thoughts into our mind and tries to deposit them into the subconscious mind is mind control. So we have to be aware of that. That And it happens at any time. It can happen through the music we listen to, even through the food that we're eating, um, to the interactions and the environments that we're in. Um, but when we're starting to work with these interdimensional aspects of ourselves, um, we're, some of these things are very advanced uh, technologically or consciousness that has the ability of sometimes playing tricks, okay? And so what, what, what will happen, again, we are all creating our reality. That's the first thing. So if you are experiencing a lot of these negative experiences, we have a belief system somewhere in the subconscious mind that this is something that can happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we will project into our reality, just the slightest little tinge of fear can project into the reality, the manifestation of some of these lower vibrational frequencies. Why? Because you're a match to that. And so we around us have any kind of entities, beings that are always around us. And when we're not aware of our own energetic body, they can come in and attach to us, okay, mm -hmm. at any time. So they can come in and sometimes they can mask themselves as, as Jesus, as angels. Sometimes they, they, they do these things. And that's why we have to learn discernment and we have to really heighten our psychic abilities, our intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to identify who we're connecting with. Um, you know, for example, those that channel you know, who are you channeling? Why? What's the information? We always have to question so much these, this right. information so that we know mm -hmm. that what we're connecting to is really in alignment with our core belief. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's important to have that dialogue. So let me make sure that I answer that question. And, and I just wanted to add to that, that um, <clears throat> I think the way that we um, really improve our discernment and improve our psychic abilities is to sit and meditate and connect to source. Is there any other way to do it? No, no, Shuri. Thank you so much for saying that. It's the only way. And sometimes people look at me and they're like, why? You know, <laughs> I know right? Why? But that's the way you got to sit down and you got to close your eyes and you got to do the work. You have to connect because the yeah. entire universe is within you. Mm -hmm. I never read a single book about these things, but when I woke up and I went in and I meditated, the entire information of the universe was available to me. And that's how I learned about these things. So we can all yeah. do that, all of us. And, you know, I've heard, like, I've had teachers who said, like, you got to sit and meditate for at least 40 minutes a day, or you're not doing anything, you know? And then I've had other teachers who were like, just connect for 10 minutes you know? And so I, I guess the answer is like, it's really um, different for everyone. Like whatever your truth is or whatever works for you is the right answer. But do you have a strong opinion on that question? Like, you know, is there a minimum amount of time or like, can you, I mean, now that you've been doing this a long time, obviously you can probably just get information whenever you need it, but um, others may have to sit for 30 minutes and get answers. Yeah, that's true. And really, I mean, I've been teaching meditation for over 10 years now. And the thing is, everyone's very different. Okay, we all have 
uh, different programs running. Some of our monkey minds are more active than others. Um, so we need to uh, we need to learn the techniques of meditation that work for us. Mm -hmm. Some people are very visual. I'm very visual. So I do a lot of energetic visual healing. And um, the techniques that I learn and train people to do work with the chakra system. One of the most powerful techniques that I have learned is to come into a state of full awareness of your body and to close, disconnect the first three chakras, because the first three chakras, the root sacral solar are what connect us to the physical plane. So when we disconnect those chakras, we are closing them. We're kind of taking a moment to reset them. You don't, you never close them and then leave them closed to just in meditation when you're fully protected and aware. Huh. You close That's really them. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so yeah. that is basically funneling your, your life force energy into the higher chakras, the heart, right. throat, and the third eye, and you begin to activate your psychic abilities. Right. So this is a really great way to start training yourself and helping yourself. And there's many, many techniques. I, I teach a lot of them on my channel too, on my YouTube channel that you guys can check out. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, it's different for any, for everyone. Learn what works for you, but take the time to find out what works for you. Don't just give up because, you know, there's some great great techniques out there for everyone. Yeah. Right. Right. And Geraldine, by the way, has great free meditations all over the web. I mean, I remember when you did your 30 days of meditation videos, I was like, wow, that's such dedication. <laughs> I was really impressed with your um, discipline and your dedication and your service to people, you know, because the, the, the accountability factor is really important. I think, I mean, how many of us just want someone to go to the gym with us so we can have accountability to work out? You know, it's the same for meditation and, um, and to do it every day for like that with a group for 30 days. Like, that was really awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Do check that out. I'll be doing it again pretty soon. Uh, but again, I, sometimes I travel a lot, but mm -hmm. I love doing that. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, it looks like we have another question from Dext. Uh, he says, so are we, so we are the creators of the false matrix, not an extraterrestrial source from somewhere else, question mark. Mm -hmm. So that's a really amazing question. It's a really complex question because it starts going into the origins of the creation of our entire universe, this multiverse that we live in. And this is something that I really uh, take a lot of time in researching and present on actually. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the way that I look at it is like this. Um, if you can imagine what I was talking about when consciousness rejects itself, it becomes parasitic. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine that this entire matrix multiverse is an organism that has decided to reject its own consciousness. And in order to do that, it then has to create aspects of itself in which will produce um, uh, more life force energy to sustain that kind of consciousness. Okay. Again, uh, when we go, when we, when we think about the stories of uh, the book of Enoch and the Emerald tablets, and we go back to Mesopotamia, to the very origin of life seated on this planet, I saw that there are three main lineages, bloodlines that create life on this planet. Okay. And those main bloodlines are bloodlines of consciousness, the original consciousness. Mm. They function in a certain way that have created a lot of the systems that we live in now in our matrix. And from those lineages have basically descended and created all the races, the human races that we have here on this planet. So, um, and not just our planet, but many plants, many different species that were created from the, these original consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come into the three-dimensional plane, again, the laws of the universe are duality. So there's always both, okay? There's always going to be the light and the dark. Really, it's up to any organism to decide what they want to experience. There is free will, even for that parasitic consciousness. It's their free will to experience that lack of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so while we choose, in a sense, to come into this parasitic consciousness, there's also something that, that occurs, that the consciousness that isn't becoming aware of itself cyclically over and over again for centuries and centuries, you know, it's kind of stuck. So 
it's up to you. You choose in, in, within these 100 years of life to become aware, but that awareness transcends just the physical. That awareness has to happen in dream time. It has to happen even in preparation for death. And we begin to kind of learn about these kinds of ancient techniques of, of consciousness um, by looking at our history. We go look at the pyramids. We go look at some of these ancient energetic spots around, the, about, around our planet mm -hmm. that are showing these chambers of reincarnation, of utilizing the soul and how the soul is moving in and out of this physical body. So when we look at that, we begin to tap into this ancient knowledge of how this human body works and the kind of work that we're doing here now to wake up, you know, if you want to, um, it's available to you. Um, it will define the vibrational frequency that you have at the moment of your death. And from there, when you're leaving this physical body, you can choose, okay, to either go back into that reincarnation cycle or to experience something else. Okay. But again, it's free will. Yeah. So it's not that we're saying that this parasitic consciousness or this universe is like out to get us now to attack us. I mean, it's completely up to you, but you know, it's very easy to fall into this matrix, to the feeling body, to the sensory body, to go out and enjoy and party and drink and, and get lost in pain and suffering and uh, how, live that life that way. So it, it's you know, totally up to us. Okay. Yeah. And unfortunately we're kind of set up. <laughs> yeah, it is true. we've yeah. been set up like it's just all around us it's everywhere it's so integral of in part you know in our society you know yes yes and, and you know Shuri, one of the things that I'm, I'm so passionate about this year is to really embody this new human i mean i think there's a call to us um you know all listeners out there let's embody once and for all we have to walk the walk talk the talk embody this kind of infinite consciousness this higher self being without any fear because when one of us does it we give permission to the next person to do it right. and so we slowly are pulling away from this matrix that you know keeps us so entangled in, in those things and we realize soon enough that even the genetically modified food genetically modified air genetically modified everything that is slowly trying to uh you know control and compress the human body uh yeah. we we transcend that by raising our frequency and our vibration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and it's okay to you know strive for that i feel like totally. and 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 make mistakes, you know, like we're all doing the best we can. <laughs> we so are, we so yeah. are. And it's just, it's just life. It's just experience, you know? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me see if there are any other questions. Uh, if you guys have a question, please put it in all caps. Uh, this, I think this is a question from Lindsay. She says, when we are deprogramming, how can we learn how far back the program began in a DNA lineage. So grandmother, great grandmother, and so on. That's amazing. Wonderful, wonderful question. So it's a great one. literally, it, it, we think that we need to go into these extensive regressions to get to the root, but just in your day today, you know, what emotion came up for you the most? Okay. You just identify that one emotion. Okay. Even if you have a week that's different from another week, you just take that emotion and you follow it back to the last time you experience it. Take it back to the root of when that happened. Take it back to the very first time in your life that you experienced that, that emotion. And what you're going to find is that you're, you're having repetitive patterns, repetitive experiences throughout your life that you can work with. And so you once you do that work you begin to realize where that program first started okay mm -hmm. and a lot of times it happens obviously with ourselves because from the ages of from birth actually from the womb we begin to define our emotional understanding of the world around us that's when the programming begins so some so a lot of my clients i take them back to the womb and we realize that maybe this feeling of inadequacy or unworthiness actually it's not even theirs it actually came from their mother when when she was um you know the child had, was in the womb and you begin to understand the most beautiful thing is that inherently our 
our um, our souls, our bodies, we know na the natural laws of the universe. We know what it means to be that ba balanced expression of the divine feminine and masculine. It's when we're born, it's when we begin to feel the emotions of others that we begin to feel a disconnect. And that's when the programs start to sit in, okay? And so what suffering is, is the imbalance of those perceptions. So when we have an imbalanced masculine and feminine aspect of ourselves, we begin to uh, you know, see that kind of a disconnect. So we have to go back and rebalance those kinds of perspectives. So just within that lifetime, what you'll notice is where your mother got that programming from. And most likely it's gonna be the same for her. She got it from her mother or her, or her father, whoever, Whichever one of the parents is holding on to that imbalanced perception that created it, like, for example, let's say the mother was uh, feeling unworthy all her life and didn't love herself. Mm -hmm. So she kind of gave her that the mother before that the grandmother, the great grandma, the great mom, it just goes down the entire lineage. And so you are a product of that. So when you're born, what's going to happen is that your entire perception of the divine feminine is this way. This is how you perceive the divine feminine. But it goes even deeper than that. This belief system is what causes any imbalances in the physical body. Hmm. The physical body has it has the divine feminine and masculine. The masculine is the right side, the feminine is the left side. So what's really interesting is that this is this is that side of the body will be the one that's going to be manifesting pain, aches, illnesses, you know, imbalances in the body. We're going to see it on the left side. Okay. So it's really interesting. And the more you learn about that, you begin to understand why you have the illnesses that you have, um, you know, the the behaviors, the thought, the emotional problems, everything from ADHD to, uh, you know, some uh, kind of autoimmune disease, even, uh, we begin to understand where those come from. And it's all based in these kinds of belief systems that go down our ancestral lineage. Um, so, so it can go very far. And some clients are even ready to go beyond this lineage. They, they even tap into their extraterrestrial aspects or past lives. Honestly, it doesn't really matter because what we're looking at is it's we're looking at the program of belief that is creating a vibrational frequency, which right. is an imbalance in the entire network in that web that I told you about of mm -hmm. consciousness. Yeah, we need to correct that kind of imbalance. That's all that's all that needs to be done. And uh, I heard you say that, you know, the past is really the future right so ancient egypt is really the future or you know meso meso how do you say that mesotapia yeah, meso yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really the future um and that makes me think about dna reprogramming which is also work that you do and so can you talk about dna reprogramming a little bit and how you know if everything is happening now you know but yet we have these DNA programs from our lineage and our ancestrals and our past, which might be our future. How does that, how does that all tie in? You know, like if, if you had a mother who had self-worth issues, like you mentioned, um, and, and I, and that person could then come in and reprogram her DNA to remove that programming. And it clears it up for the past and the future, right? Absolutely. It's all happening now. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. when we talk about DNA reprogramming, just really quickly, what we're doing is we're looking at the vibrational frequency that your body has, your entire organism. Okay. You have a vibrational, that vibrational frequency is created um, uh, by all of the belief systems that you have. So all the information that you have in your seven main chakras in the body create one vibrational frequency and that vibrational frequency i see it as a color okay that's how, that's the language of color of light which is really easy for us to understand mm -hmm. so this color is basically helping you identify what it is that your organism needs in order to evolve to the next stage and this is in stages of course evolving ascension it happens in stages and layers so let's say for example the color is green okay so green what does that mean uh, I look at you, your color comes out green. And so we're going to put that up into the crown chakra. The I'm crown chakra. My color is green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is my color green, Geraldine? <laughs> green, it's green, baby. Okay. But? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's funny. Uh, but let's say we put that color up in the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is one of the most the kind of hidden chakras that we don't really hear a lot about, but one of the most important because this is where we are projecting into our reality what we're going to be experiencing. Because this is what's holding on to all the information that's in this entire body. So if we begin to program, reprogram, change, uh, you know, our emotional state, our belief system, it's going to change what's happening up here. This is the center of manifestation. Station. The law of attraction happens up here. Hmm. So, um, what as we begin to heal and change, we utilize this color to assist the body in identifying where these programs are, where these imbalances are in the body. And so, in hmm. a session, DNA, we're going to identify these these events in life that have triggered that imbalance. So, we clean up and we work with that information. And what we find is that that green color usually is the exact vibrational frequency that your ancestors required in order to heal and clean up. So we're gonna go all the way back to your mother's lineage, but her lineage is holding on to her ancestors that go back to the origin. So what we do is we look at the origin of your um, mother or father, and let's say, for example, they come from Nicaragua. And so we look at the root, the belief system, that it, it literally, what we are kind of a network of these roots and cords. Every time we interact with someone, we're creating an energetic cord. So me and you have a cord, we have a cord with all our lovely listeners. And those cords go all the way back to the origin of those, their, their thought forms, okay? So these thought forms go back to your country, Nicaragua. And literally, it's like a root that is embedded in that earth on the physical plane. Mm -hmm. When we uproot that, we are calling all of the ancestors that are linked with that thought form up. Okay, so it can be hundreds of people that are, this is how you clean up this collective trauma. Okay, so you see all of these and you, uh, you identify what, what vibrational frequency do these beings require in order to transcend from that experience. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you transform that, that's when the deep uh, healing really occurs because you are kind of in a sense releasing fragments because these these are not just ancestors they're actually fragments of your own self of course you cannot do healing on anyone else without their permission so yeah. what you're looking at is fragments of your own self within mm -hmm. these ancestors and that's what we need to clean up so as you clean all of that up they go out back there uh you know reunited with source whatever it is and um it allows you to integrate that lesson on a deeper level so by the time you go back full circle back to your present day trauma present day emotions and triggers um it completely creates a new neural pathway in your brain about how to interact with that specific trigger hmm. So that vibrational frequency eventually will shift and change as you are reprogramming your DNA. And it can take as, as, as quick as a week to two years. It completely depends on how you are willing to let go uh, or support yourself in those kinds of traumas and programs. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, yeah, thank you for that. And I, I might add just really briefly that when you do this kind of healing, you're also healing your children because, right. you, you know, especially when we have children, our children are the product of our mm -hmm. uh, incomplete programming. And so we're going to see in them, we're going to start to see it, uh, all the things that they are feeling. And so when we identify in ourselves, we can also support them in that healing and help them shift and change that as well. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. That's an important point for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, so there's so many topics to talk about. Um, I'd like to touch a little bit on your role in the Council of Eight, which we can, you know, I'll ask you to expand upon a little bit for those who don't know what that means. And, um, and I also would love to talk about the red virus. And, and then maybe we can touch a little bit also on 
um, you know, some of your hybrid children and some of your own experience as a hybrid. And, you know, and if we can't cover that tonight, we can certainly cover that on our next interview, which guys should happen on Saturday <laughs> if all goes well. So um, I know those are like three really big topics. Um, so maybe which one would you like to start with? Which one do you think uh, we should go with? Maybe like yeah, your role yeah. on the Council of Eight, like that one? Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, when I was, you know, it's very interesting. Um, I actually connected with this council of eight uh, through uh, a meditation one time, through a sound bath, through holotropic breathing. And that's when I first started to see this beam of blue light that connected to my forehead and it would transport me into this craft where I was surrounded with these eight beings that were different races, different extraterrestrial races. And so in the regression, I'm revisiting that experience that happened, uh, you know, during that time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, what it is, is basically that this council is a fragment of myself that I had been interacting with in order to learn and be able to provide information of the human experience back to them. And I noticed that a lot in people that are connecting with their extraterrestrial aspects. It's very interesting. It's an exchange of information. It's like, you know, you experience or you choose to experience this life through your experiences, right? And they know that it's a vibr it's a consciousness that is aware of the kind of experiences that you're going to have as a soul on this planet Earth, which brings us back to that whole parasitic consciousness and the design of how we come into our bodies and the incarnation. Uh, so keep that in the back of your mind. And okay. so when when you connect with these beings, then they're kind of observing and learning from you through you the kind of experiences that you're having. They are registering your suffering, your pain, your happiness, your joy, all the things that are occurring. So it's very interesting exchange of information but what what i found out that i was a part of them because um in my recent uh, incarnation i was uh, part of this pleiadian group mm -hmm. and this is actually when i had my conscious abduction they took me to pleiades and that was one of the first information that they showed me that i had been in a pleiadian that i had been speaking teaching and working to the effect kind of very similar to what i'm doing now um mm -hmm. just talking about I don't know, consciousness and the structure of our understanding of these bodies that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I had been a part of them, providing them with information um, as part of their specific agenda. But I, I will say that, you know, for me, I, I need to know things are very true. And, and for me, I really, um, that, that wasn't enough for me to just hear that. I had to do some more research to try to understand what exactly was happening there. Because in my mind, the concept of free will is very important for me. Because I think that any time that we start to fall into patterns of behavior that are subject to exchange of information, the question is why? You know, why is this exchange happening? Why is there information coming back and forth? And who benefits from it? How yeah. are we benefiting from it? So, you know, what, what I've kind of learned from these experiences, because I've, I've tapped into many fragments of myself that had the opportunity and the, avail the availability to connect with these kinds of beings, maybe even channel some information from them at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out that I, that I was, uh, through my regression, I was uh, part of a Merovingian bloodline, which made me very available to these kinds of hybridization programs. And really anyone that sustains this connection, direct connection to these kinds of bloodlines are used in the hybridization program. What, what was the name of the bloodline again? It's a Merovingian bloodline, okay. which is supposed to be a bloodline, a very, uh, you know, well-known bloodline that went down through history, which is said to originate in Jesus's bloodline. Okay. Now, if you look at the historical timeline of these bloodlines, it's very interesting. I've done a lot of research on these. These actually originate in Mesopotamia and go all the way down through history, through the Romans, going up to Europe and going even down to Americas, even into our presidency, through some of the greatest artists like Leonardo da Vinci, like the Medici's families, like all of these families that have been in great power in historical timeline have a very similar bloodline that have originated in that 
Jesus bloodline, supposedly. Okay. But in reality, we're all a descendant of those bloodlines. I mean, just uh, 2000 years ago, we all have one person that we have in common, even me and you, Sheree, you know, all of our listeners, we have someone in common. So that means that there is a, a origin of which our bloodlines are being uh, basically put out into the world to create the different races and people. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to note when we go into these multidimensional aspects of ourselves, why is this information being put in, in and out? So um, what I have decided uh, personally for me that my work is going to be solely connected to my my own higher self and you know even though these councils are incredibly interesting and i'd love to uh, perhaps experiment and connect with them my information is going to come solely from my higher self and that's kind of like the kind of way that i decided to work with things because in this kind of multi-dimensional reality um there's a lot of exchange going on and we yeah. do live in something that is a parasitic consciousness. So we have to be very aware of that. So anyway, uh, to cut it short, that was, that, that was what, what happened with that council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, cause it was kind of like a, um, something that you were part of on another dimension or, you know, in yeah. the past reality, but, exactly. but you still had the connection in this timeline and this reality. Correct. And, yeah. and, and honestly, Cherie, I uh, cleaned up a lot of those contractual agreements um, because oh. I think that, you know, what, what my job is here mm -hmm. is to be uh, this sovereign soul that chooses how to live this life in this incarnation. So I would like to disconnect from any kind of uh, connection so that I can then choose how I wish to create and move on from this kind of right. um, you know, manifestation agreement. Yeah, that's a really interesting topic too. Um, you know, I've heard many healers, shamans say like, oh, you have a contract with this person or you have this contract to do this here on earth during this time. And unfortunately we come in and we forget what those contracts are, right? Like we're just amnesia yeah. all the way. So, um, you know, and I think that, um, many people who are more like anchored in 3d don't even believe in this concept yes you know so i guess the question would be like if you believe in the concept of having a contract a pre-existing contract and we all know that we have free will um you know is it an important thing on a spiritual journey if you're on an ascension path or or you know, you're on a, a, a path of being of service, is it important to like really look at those contracts and make sure that they're current and they're up to date and that they're serving you and, and your highest and best iteration of yourself and also those around you, possibly your children or your family members, et cetera? Absolutely, and that's such an important question. We have to remember that we are all one. We are one consciousness. The parasitic consciousness you we are all one there's no separation um and so what that means is that when we come into this physical body uh I, we're gonna replace the word contract because contract sounds a little sounds, sounds a little scary and kind of controlled and limited right what we're talking about is vibrational frequency hmm. so are, it's not an agreement it's not necessarily, it's an agreement, but let me show you why and how. The agreement is based on your vibrational frequency, okay? If your vibrational frequency is at a certain level to experience fear, you're going to match with other beings of the same vibrational frequency, and you're going to be a match. And the contract is created, the contract is created when this vibrational union is made. This link so is it's changing moment to moment is what you're saying. Moment to moment, exactly. Okay, well, that's there good. So there's nothing written in stone. Phew. That's correct. That's, correct. <laughs> that's a good not, thing. It's written, it's written in your vibrational frequency. It's written in your DNA. Okay. It is, it is written in your DNA because your DNA is holographic and it's holding on. Again, your entire human organism is one vibrational frequency, which is made up of many belief systems, which are again, vibrational frequency. So as you change those, you're changing your overall uh, you know, frequency. And so that will change the kind of contractual agreements or matches that you're making to everything multidimensionally 
physically, me and you, and multidimensionally with other aspects of yourself, which could be anything. They could be beings that are angels, extraterrestrials, entities, whatever they are. Right. Um, you know, and so we make these agreements mm -hmm. based on the choices that we make in our everyday life. Right. Okay. So it could be as simple as a boyfriend or girlfriend or exactly. Yeah. So basically, yeah. once you decide to engage with that person, it's like a new contractual agreement. Exactly. And so this is a very touchy subject that I really like to spend time on because we talk, we talk about our families. Okay. Our family, see in our reality, we're born in a place where we think that we are, we, we are born out of the womb of our mother. So our mother here and our father, they are our, this is our, our family, you know, we're, we're tied to them. We're, we're of them. We're part of them. Mm -hmm. But even with them, we have contractual agreements. Okay. Why? Because you're not this body. You look like a girl, which is a daughter of this mother and this man that's a father. But in reality, we're playing roles in a matrix. We have to remember, we have to be able to look at things beyond what we're seeing here. Okay, you're a soul first, first and foremost. And that soul was incarnating in this lineage, embodying the shape of this female for a reason. It has to do with all of the vibrational frequencies, the lessons that your soul needs in order to experience what you're looking to experience during this time. Mm -hmm. So you can change that. That can change at any time. So what it means is that when you clean up all those things, you're going to clean up even the contractual agreements that you have with your parents. It doesn't mean they're going to go away. It means it's going to reset the interaction and the programs that you have that you're sharing with each other. And mm -hmm. it can completely change the relationship that you have. Sometimes I see families pull away from each other. Sometimes I see them come closer together. Mm -hmm. In my experience, um, I'll give you a quick example with my father, you know, I was very far away from him for a long time. until I started to clean up my programs and then I neutralized all those programs to a point where now our, our relationship is better than ever. We see each other as equals and there is a level of respect and, um, you know, this spiritual connection that is, it, it's very different. And so that's kind of the thing, but we don't play the roles of father and daughter. We play the roles of these individual souls having this human experience. And that can be a very difficult um, way to look at families in our current day life because we think, oh, we have to follow these roles, but don't forget that those are compartmentalized systems that we are in, okay? And, and I know there's a whole biology, a whole structure of reality behind that, yeah. but we have to begin to look at the higher level of these things, which are really important for the soul's journey. Right. And do you believe that um, <clears throat> if you clean up your own DNA or whatever you, you know, you work on your contracts and your triggers, et cetera, that you're healing the whole soul group. Like, do you believe in soul groups and Absolutely. Cherie, thank you so much for bringing that up because that's, that's the next step. That's exactly what we're doing that, you know, I clean up my trauma. It opens up space for my family to clean up their trauma. And it's amazing. It's amazing what's happened in my entire family. Um, you know, with my family, I, uh, we are very spiritual, but I think of my immediate family, I was the one that implemented on a really deep level, all of the things first. And when I did that, it opened space for others to do it. And they started to then apply it themselves. And it completely changed the dynamic of even my entire family. That's family amazing. issues. Yeah, family issues that we've had for years, communication of my ancient relatives that have come up, cleaning up old uh, secrets, old family dramas that have been hidden in the past. Oh, secrets in Latin families. <laughs> you, know, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> old oh, yeah. telenovela soap opera of our lives, you know, comes out. And that, that's, it's a gift because you begin to neutralize those and you allow people to come into who they truly are, not the role that we've been, you know, cramped into. So it, right. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, okay. So uh, I have so many questions, but <laughs> let me pick a really good one because we, we only have like 15 to 20 minutes left. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you were doing, and I know I keep going back to this regression, but it was just so chock full of information. Um, you know, going back to what we touched on earlier about, um, you know, 
the planet being like a cell and individuals being like cells and um, there being a, like a parasitic energy here in the 3D that hasn't been fully evolved or cleaned up yet. Um, I've heard other speakers say that there's like a, that there was like an AI virus that was created by source by mistake. And I heard you talk about a red virus, like a red light that was kind of like expanding through the universe. And the way you described it to me, I, I envisioned like a fractal, you know, like it has these like teardrop shapes on the ends and it just kind of keeps repeating itself. Um, and our universe, our, our, our multiverse is like a fractal that just keeps expanding and expanding. So, you know, my question is, two questions. One, do you believe that this red virus was created by mistake, by source? And two, um, do you believe that, you know, it's still here and it's still growing and expanding? And can you talk a little bit more about what it is? You know, I, I don't think that anything is by mistake. I think that nature is an intelligence that we barely even begun to even think that we understand. I mean, if you if you even look at our science or physics, first of all, we're very behind um, in mainstream science and physics in understanding how our world functions. Um, and much less, we're barely getting into metaphysics or, you know, things that are that are starting to look into quantum physics to look at, you know, how consciousness works and how these other dimensions are really interacting with us here. But it's a conversation that's it's it's coming up more and more. And I'm glad to see that it is. But all of us have to come up to speed with that information because it helps us understand how our world is really functioning. Um, what 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 I what I believe really in 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 you know, regarding this is that, you know, it, it cannot be a mistake. It, that's why I said that everything has free will. Um, the thing that we're trying to explain in a way for people to understand is what is consciousness? And that's a question that's so difficult to kind of explain. But any kind of um, uh, organism that has a consciousness has the ability of applying their free will. And they have a, a choice to choose how they want to experience themselves. Okay, yeah. whether they're aware of it or not, that will define their awareness of that. Wow. Um, but in that same way, you this stop right there. That was like so profound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, keep going. <laughs> um, I mean, but... that's a really simple way. And like you just simplified it, which is really beautiful. You know, that, like that all awesome. consciousness has a choice of yeah. free will. You know. But, anyway, yeah, so but just quickly to go back to that red what i was talking about which is really interesting uh sheree is because what we were taught what i what i was looking at is this red substance okay what is red i see it as red because it's a frequency the five frequency is a very low heavy wave frequency which mm -hmm. we can understand we translate that frequency as fear okay so fear is what is manipulating controlling and is being utilized to mind control the majority of our human race mm -hmm. okay. and that fear because any time that a human begins to believe in fear fear is separation okay it is the is the they fall into that illusion of separation sure. of something that is separate from them so when we fall into that mindset we begin to come into the destruction of the organism it begins to I want to compartmentalize, separate, and the whole thing can fall apart as we see in our, in our everyday life here. So this substance, this red substance, is kind of like an, an organism, even in itself, right? Which is this consciousness that is utilized to manipulate. Now, this is very interesting because then we go into something called um, this programmable consciousness, which is in a sense, uh, a kind of artificial intelligence that is created to move and shift people, okay? And what, what I have seen in this world is that, yeah, there is such thing as this kind of parasitic consciousness that's creating technology, particularly artificial intelligence, which we are being, uh, it's being implemented. We are absorbing it through our skin, 
okay, even, even the cosmetics that we use are holding on to this kind of programmable consciousness. Even the air that we're breathing with uh, chemtrails and things that are being sprayed on our crops is shifting and changing uh, our DNA. It is genetically modifying our DNA. You're talking about nanotechnology. Literally, yes, yeah. nanotechnology. And so, uh, you know, what, what it does is it will bind to our DNA and shift it in a sense where it is uh, suppressing because this entire matrix multiverse, even though we live in a parasitic consciousness, the natural movement is evolution. It is a spiral that is moving up. That's just the natural movement of this entire multiverse. So you cannot avoid that awakening. That's why there is so much that goes into the suppression of our consciousness, whether it's through the intoxication of drugs, you know, of uh, alcohol, music, sex, uh, everything, even the survival, even the belief that we have to be in survival mode in a system that is created that way is, is sustaining the human organism in this constant state of fear and separation that they feel helpless. So we have to begin to look at that. That is all a part of this mind control program. And there is technology that is being implemented that we have to be aware of. But what does it do? It plays with that fear consciousness, okay? And that's a part of us. It's a natural part of the fragmentation of infinite consciousness because again, there is, this is a dualistic expression. We have the light, the dark, there's fear, there's love. We just need to learn how to integrate this. We need to understand both of them so that we can learn how to navigate uh, when, when they come up. That's, that's it. That's all it is. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to check and see if we have any more questions in the chat room. Um, <clears throat> so Jay Silva says, what is the, what is the best to remove negative alien implants in the bodies in all layers? Very great question. Um, and I, you know, you have to understand that if you spoke to me about seven years ago, I would not even, if you said the word extraterrestrial, like I wouldn't, I'd be like, okay, cool. You know, I wouldn't even think about it. You'd be like, wait, what? Not, yeah, I was not someone that was into sci-fi or all these things until this happened to me. Mm -hmm. But I myself had experienced these kinds of implants. As a matter of fact, after my abduction, you know, I had three dots on my on my arm. I had marks on my body, many things, you know. Um, and so what I've yeah. learned. I like that story where you said that you had three marks and then that one of them moved to the other side. It's and so incredible. And do you think the implant just moved over? No, what happened is that there's three dots and I mean, maybe you'll post a picture of it later, but so what happens is these, these dots, which they look like little, little tiny moles, this is, it's technology, they're implants. And actually I'd done research on this because I ran into this scientist that was working in, in Colombia that had been working on a side project for the government for a nanotechnology company that was creating micro um, implants that look like moles literally this is a real wow. thing okay and so and they were placing it into the body so it looks like a mole but it's an implant and so when i read that i mean i almost had a heart attack because i thought holy moly well you know what's happening here because mm -hmm. i'm not the only one i mean this is well known in the field of ufology uh people that are abductees they have these things that look like moles from one day to the next on the body and mm -hmm. you can tell that they are just they're different and they're always in the shape of a triangle or they have some interesting kind of pattern to them so the question is what's happening but in that regression with alba um i went in to dissolve one of the implants Okay, and when I did this, immediately after the regression, this mole disappeared. Okay, wow. then couple so 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 with Alba, I mean, we were, we were talking about this. We we're like Alba, you know, that did that really happen? Yes, it really happened. So what's that telling? That's informing us as to the technology and how it interacts with our consciousness. We have the ability because some of these are physical, but they're not, they're multidimensional. Everything's multidimensional. The reason that they're able to put implants into the body is because they use their own DNA so that it binds with the body. A lot of people say, how do you have alien uh, technology inside your body? Wouldn't you die? Wouldn't you get an infection? They are made with your own genetic material, which then binds with your organism. 
okay, because it, these implants are done in stages. Um, it's not just a one-time shot. They come in, they take material, they create the implants, they come back, they imp implant them into the body. And they are made for different things, whether it's monitoring the body, getting information, shifting things, controlling things, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are put in the body. So etheric, they're also etheric. You got to understand because when it binds to the body, the body's holographic, it is holding on to information. So when you enter that holographic, you can access that holographic state through meditation by, uh, by accessing the frequency, you begin to dissolve and shift that information and you break the contractual agreements or the vibrational match to this kind of agenda that you chose to experience and you clear it up and the implants will no longer affect your body. Um, I've had implants taken from the back of my uh, neck, different parts of my body and really truly have, have experienced a shift in emotional state, thoughts, many different things. It's very interesting. And a lot of my clients come to me and tell me that they have pre they have experienced a lot of these differences too. You know, mm -hmm. So it's a very well thing. And I forget what I want to say. But then after a couple months later, I experienced something. And then the new mole showed up. And so people say, oh my God, some people get moles all the time. Um, and that's fine. But my body, for example, I don't have very many. I mean, I can count how many I have on my body. So mm -hmm. when I saw it appear, it was quite significant. You know, you could tell that there was a difference. And it, the experience will be different for many people. Sometimes they're implants with metals. And you are welcome to watch that film. It's called, I think, Patient 19 or Patient something, where they were researching. It's a documentary on the, on the research that Dr. Lear was doing right. um, about implants, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away, but literally, they, they sent it to someone in Mexico to research. And I mean, it was like 21 something metals that you know have radiation that unless it was structured in a way that the body could sustain i mean anybody would have died um so we're talking about advanced technology sure yeah. um do you believe that etheric implants are different than physical implants or do they um does one create the other you know i mean i i i've always believed that energetic beings can put etheric implants in us um, but I'd love to hear your opinion on how they're different or not. That's amazing. And I agree with you. Etheric beings can put in those kinds of implants. And sometimes they're very complex. So our multidimensional body, I mean, we have to look at ourselves as this whole organism. We have layers of, 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 of energy in our body. Each one of those layers have a different frequency, which is uh, emitted and created by the different chakra systems in the body. And mm -hmm. so depending on where we find that kind of implant it's attaching and matching the vibrational frequency in which it's implanted in okay so um whatever uh we we start to work to remove that we have to go into those layers and and remove it from there but what that means is that it will affect the physical body as well so mm -hmm. sometimes people will have uh physical ailments you know sometimes they have throat issues and they're like oh, i don't know why i have like these thyroid problems and you can, you can see that there's an imbalance first in the energetic body, multidimensional body, and you realize it's an implant. However, Sheree, I want to be very clear that, you know, again, we have to remind everyone that everything is in the mind, even though that's an implant that was implemented with, by some being, we have the ability of destroying and removing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful we are. So we, we sure. have to go in there and break that contractual agreement and remove it out of our way. Now, there are some implants that are, that are tricky. They're very complex. The best way to help ourselves is by raising our frequency because these implants, again, you're talking about different dimensions. We're in the 3D. The reason why it's in the 3D physical body is because it's on, it's on that plane. So all the frequencies that are managed in that dimension, like fear, like anger, like all these emotions, okay, they're going to translate it, simplify it into emotions or vibrational frequencies. And that's what it's attaching to. It's mm -hmm. running to those belief um, by those belief systems in the body, just like that red substance that I talked about. Yeah. So when we lift ourselves up from that vibrational frequency, we're no longer in that. And I have experienced that firsthand. And I know many people that have experienced that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I don't know if we answered his question, but I think it was like, 
think we did. <laughs> what is what is the best to remove negative alien implants in the bodies in all layers? Yeah, I so, so I don't know if he's asking what the best best method is. Yeah. So Sounds first, like a, first of all, become aware of where the implant is. And you can do that by, you know, first training yourself to see your multidimensional body, becoming aware of where you're feeling the implant and dive into it. Okay. Take a look at what, what it's affecting. It'll help you understand what vibrational frequency it's attaching to and matching with, and you can begin to work with that. You can also break the contractual agreements or that vibrational match with the agenda that you are dealing with, with these beings. And you can choose to dissolve that by removing it out of your body literally imagine yourself removing it from your body you're destroying it and inherently when you do that it immediately subconsciously raises the frequency away from what that is because you're no longer in alignment you are choosing mm -hmm. with your free will to no longer be in alignment with that it's the power of the mind is so important so um that and then of course raise your frequency so stay out of that low frequency moving forward Right. And does that apply to physical implants as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> okay. And, and, and just to add to that, because I know there's people that really want to look at those details, even if it's physical in the body, it might still be there. So it's not like some people, they don't, they don't know if they can have it removed. Some people literally feel the implant in their body. It might still be there, but it will not affect you if mm. you, if you destroy it. Uh, you know, in your mind, you can disable it in a sense. Well, because most physical implants are biological and organic, right? Like they're metal mixed with your, your biological material, yeah. the organic material somehow. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's really fascinating. So on a, so it has its own consciousness, which you can thereby affect. Exactly. That's exactly the perfect way to put it. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How are we doing? Wow. It's already nine o'clock. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing on time? You feeling okay? I, I'm great, Shuri. If we want to keep going, we can. If we need to go, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I'm like burning to ask you because. Sure. Um, oh yeah. So here's a big question. And then I'll check and see if there's, I don't see any more questions right now from the audience, but so here's a really big question. Um, why does source need us to heal the planet? That's a beautiful question. And, you know, it's, it's not really so much that source needs us again, it's free will. So, so, but the, I guess, and the question is, well, why would source create or allow even a parasitic consciousness to manifest, right? Well, I guess like, and why do we, why are we here? Like, why, why is the goal to go back to source, right? Like, why are we here and we're in this imperfect state and we need to heal it so we can go back? Like if source is perfect already to begin with, how did it get imperfect? And like, why are we going through this you know, evolution, essentially. Yeah, beautiful. It's really important to ask that question on our journey because it, because everything is a fractal of each other down to the cell in your body, to this entire multiverse. It's mm -hmm. everything functions in that same design, okay? There is a feminine and a masculine, positive and negative energy, the duality. And it takes duality to make a whole infinite consciousness is that whole but it's experiencing itself through all aspects otherwise it wouldn't be infinite consciousness so that infinite consciousness is experiencing pain and suffering it's experiencing separation it's experiencing all these things and through those experiences it creates this whole self now again any aspect of that infinite consciousness that decides that it wants to be individual, that wants to believe in separation, it has, it has the free will to do that. And that's what happened here. Mm -hmm. It decided that it wanted to be individual. And so then, in a sense, it rejects its own infinite consciousness because it wants to be its own creator, believing that it's separate. Okay? That's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> It's so, really wild. 
as it does that, it then evolves into this entire consciousness in which it needs, it becomes parasitic. So it has to create things to keep moving, to create and keep creating and playing with that creation energy. Mm -hmm. But it's an imbalanced, right? It's imbalanced. It's lacking the whole. So we, as infinite consciousness, the bigger question, the biggest existential question is, well, so what are we, you know? we just come into this parasitic consciousness to experience this pain and suffering? Is it really our free will or are we trapped in that, you know? And, you know, it's something that, you know, we're all trying to understand really. And, and we ultimately, trust me, and I've gone through the deepest levels of this trying to understand, but ultimately we don't know, you know, we don't know what, what is the truth. But what I can tell you is that if we have this free will, Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the structure of our reality and our multidimensionality, we have the ability of moving beyond this parasitic consciousness based on our awareness and our evolution. So right. up to us in this small little hundred years to decide whether we want to reincarnate back into that reincarnation cycle or we want to move beyond that. Um, but ultimately, all the experiences that we're having, that's why we have to become really aware because these kinds of councils and these, these agendas, the hybridization agendas that are happening, what they're doing is fragmenting our soul. Mm. When they take a child from us, it's a part of our soul that they have now fragmented with a very specific combination of other genetic material that genetic material makes this organism available to travel and traverse different planes of existence. So it's, it's a plus for them because now this organism is controllable. It is, they can use it for any number of things, whether it's good or bad, you know, it can be high vibration program, low vibration, whatever it is. The problem that I have with it is that it's imposing on your free will. Right. Okay. And so in that sense, that entire behavior in my mind is parasitic. So our job here is to become so aware of all the things that are happening to us, whether it's on those planes where we're participating in hybridization programs or in the physical and work with those to become free and take back our, uh, you know, full fragmentation to reintegrate into that zero point of consciousness that we are mm -hmm. ultimately all becoming one again it's just it's just the way it's just the design when infinite consciousness comes in down through the different dimensions it fragments that's just the function of how it works that's the mm -hmm. physics of this universe this multiverse so uh the whole purpose is to come back to that whole from that rainbow spectrum back into that white light and so we journey through this life to come back to that white light. All are fragments. So do you have, do you hold a vision for um, heaven on earth? Like, do you think that as we go through this ascension process that we can, if we all decide to, you know, take the white path, if you will, <laughs> and we all raise our vibration and our frequency and we're all vibing at like, like super high uh, consciousness with integrity and truth and love and peace and we create heaven on earth right how do we sustain that do you see us going that way i mean if the yin and the yang have to exist if there has to be duality and separation or you know dark and light um how do we achieve heaven on earth and how do we sustain it yeah what's that's, the end game it's such an important question and really you know to be honest that the, the the dramatic thing is that there is no end game Cherie. you know and that, that's something that i really want to keep coming back over and over and over right right and and we can choose not to but the yeah. thing is that we have uh, been exposed to tremendous amount of fragmentation so you know i was able to clean up the first entire half of my life but even over the past three years I have created karma for myself or experiences that I am continuously cleaning up to be able to embody a state of unconditional love at all times so the work never ends and more than that um, and not to sound uh, you know 
pessimistic about the whole picture. <laughs> you know, the work that we're doing has to happen in dream time. We have to become aware, as aware as we are in waking time, in dream time, because dream time is when you're leaving the physical body and a lot of things can happen. A lot of the hijacking of our consciousness is occurring in dream time because it's when we're least uh, trained in uh, becoming aware of ourselves. So lucid training is incredibly important, lucid dream training. And that training enables us to become training for when we're going into death. I had a near-death experience in May of last year, and it allowed me to understand what that tunnel of white light and what that death experience was like leaving the physical body we we come into the same thing the contractual agreements the choice of what you're going to do with your soul mm -hmm. and if you're leaving at a point where the vibrational frequency is very low for example those that commit suicide those that are very lost in despair or in a horrible accident or just lived a very unconscious life until that point that's the vibrational frequency that will match you with the next experience the next life that you're going to have you see yeah. that it defined the family whatever it is that you're doing so we got to be really really aware of that and the end goal is to not come back into that vibrational frequency or at least right. when you're leaving the physical body yeah. you now have a heightened level of frequency where you can then choose the next step so don't uh, die in a car accident, basically. Well, you know, even if you die in a car accident, <laughs> you, you can help it. <laughs> <laughs> you die with the highest level of, of awareness and having done the work, having done as much work as possible. That's the thing, you know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter how you how you leave. No, um, but, uh, but how do we sustain that? And it's every moment. For me, heaven is right here, right now. In this moment when we're talking, I'm embodying unconditional love. Are we all, all our listeners, are we completely aware of our body? Are we aware and completely in alignment with what we're doing right now? I believe that's the heaven. That's, that's the embodiment. Because when we enter that state, we're creators. And then we are kind of, it's like we leave the matrix uh, mentality and the control that can be created there we're no longer a part of that mm -hmm. so that's kind of like the new earth has to happen you know here here and now this is it there's it it doesn't get pretty it doesn't nothing changes other than our state of of embodiment of that consciousness i think yeah i want i want to believe that it gets prettier it will be. Yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> guys it's gonna be get... golden white light and uh really vibrant green plants and trees hey when you're in a state of unconditional love everything is amazing trust me it's just yeah. you, you know there you, there's no there's no need to be in a constant state of cause and effect you're just creating and you're doing what you came here to do and what can be more beautiful than that mm -hmm. come into your full expression you know right yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Let me just check the chat room one more time yeah, before we let you go. Do, 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 do. Lindsay said, thank you. Uh, you just answered a similar question I've had about myself. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay. Dexter has another question. There's so much going on in the spiritual new age realm, commonly, commonly known as woo woo. How have you navigated this in your awakened journey? Yeah, that's a great question. For me, I, I try to stick with what's true, what I know to be true. And what I know to be true is what I experience. Like I'm talking about things that I have lived and experienced and done in my own self. So I, would, I never talk about anything that I haven't actually seen and experienced, first of all. So I think for us, like coming into a state of complete authenticity with our journey and what we've experienced is really important. And my, my uh, basic morals and ethics of living have been redefined completely by my understanding of what's real and what's true for me. And what's true is everything that is the embodiment of the integration of duality, the whole, okay, looking at things from, from a very realistic perspective, not lying to myself, not hiding things, not protecting ego, you know, and when, when you, when you really embody that and you apply that, you can start looking beyond the veil of deception very easily in yourself and in others. But first you got to do it with yourself. Otherwise you can see any kinds of things and 
they can lead you off your path at any moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, that's the best way to avoid any kind of deception. It's just you need to go inside and see what's true for you. And your spiritual path can be very different from every other, any other person. Um, I'm just here to hold space and to assist in your, you know, uh, transition through this pain body into unconditional love. That's it. Nothing else. So Beautiful. beautifully yeah. said. <laughs> Thank you. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. You were amazing. I threw a lot of different questions at you. So thanks for like being able to, you know, jump around with me. And, um, you know, I look forward to having you on the show again. I look forward to hanging out with you tomorrow. And, um, you know, uh, I'd love to brainstorm with you a little bit about going deeper on a particular topic that's really needed in our community right now and um, <clears throat> see what source comes, what comes through us together collectively from source that is really like the most important message you know uh that we can share with with our friends right now so i love that i love that so much sheree thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun and um you know let me know how i can be of service to your um network i'm here to serve so oh thank you. thank you yeah just keep coming back on the show <laughs> <laughs> i'm right next door <laughs> all right my love thank you and okay it, thank you so much and everyone you guys can find her at bayareameditation.com um i will also put geraldine's links in the description below so you can you know easily link off to her if you're in the bay area or even in california or you can get to california try to come out this weekend for sf ufo con and if not, do you want to share any other events you're going to be at in the next? Um, yeah, I'll be speaking at the Human Origins Conference in New Mexico in April. And then I'm going to be in Paris and London in the summertime. Oh, and the next month I'm going to be in Peru doing a retreat. So anybody in South America, I do speak Spanish too. So mm -hmm. I do host DNA reprogramming internationally through Skype and I do it in Spanish. So if anybody oh, wow. needs there i am here for you okay that's amazing yeah. that's amazing yeah okay well thank you so much again for coming on the show thanks everyone um if you like this video please like it comment and share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next ascension sessions we have a lot of great lineups coming up for this year and i will keep you posted and please um like us on twitter and facebook if you haven't already all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.